So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ePlan Virtual Fair 2020. This is the first webcast of the live webcasts that are going on today. And the topic today is ePlan Solutions Overview. My name is Sean Mulherin. I've been with ePlan since 1993, started at Vichas and Partner in 93 in Germany and in 2000 moved to our division here in the US at the time in Brookfield, Wisconsin, and then eventually moved to Detroit to support the automotive industry. And since 2013, I've been part of the product management team, and I'm now responsible for ePlan Electric P8, ePlan Fluid, and ePlan Pre-Planning. So the goal of today's presentation is to give you an overview of where ePlan is and how our products can help you make your engineering process and design more efficient. So let's get started. So the ePlan solutions. First of all, how does the landscape look like in our manufacturing process? Well, if we look at the ecosystem of industrial automation, there are multiple different players typically involved in the creation of products and services. We have the component manufacturer that provides the individual components like Rockwell or Siemens or Schneider or ABB. They would provide the components to control the machines. You have Rital or Hoffman to provide the various different control cabinets to store all of those components. These components are used by the panel builder to assemble the panels. These panel builders carry all of the control or most of the control equipment for machines and systems that are used by OEM and system integrators, and they put systems together for the end user operator to build a product, whether you're building a car, whether you're building a TV, whether you're building any type of component. In that ecosystem, there are multiple different players, and these players need to work together to be able to create the end result. And today, if you look at the different tools used at the different stages of design and engineering, you'll notice that there are many, many different tools used. You'll have Word documents, you'll have Excel sheets, you'll have AutoCAD files, you'll have Visio files, depending on what CAD tools you use, you'll have different types of, of files available. And all of this information needs to be transferred between the various different players. So if we look at the engineering process, typically an operator will start with a specification saying, I need to build this product, this is what are my requirements, this is the kind of space I have, these are the, the factories that are available, and you can start identifying the requirements. Then you will start with the general planning of the system, identifying, okay, what are the requirements to put that product together. Then you might send this information off to an OEM or a system integrator to start putting the machines and systems together. This is where the ePlan project as such gets created. The system integrator or the OEM will create an ePlan project and will start capturing some controls documentation, some controls data. This information then gets detailed. So now we're going into the detail engineering, whether you're doing pneumatics, whether you're doing electric, you're defining all of your wires, your terminals, all of the details specific to your control system and capturing that in your schematics, enriching the ePlan project. Then you need to build a panel for that particular project. So the project is sent to a panel builder and the panel builder can store or align or insert all those components in an enclosure and at the same time using the ePlan project enriching the data with topics like pro panel and creating a virtual twin of your control cabinet. Then you'll have the sourcing aspect where he will be ordering parts from the various component manufacturer to lay out his control cabinet. And finally, he has to use all of the data that he's created for the control cabinet design to build that cabinet, whether it's drilling the back plates, whether it's cutting the DIN rails to the right length, whether it's cutting the wires to the right length, wiring everything up and making sure everything works. 
And then the project is sent back to the system integrator so he can plug everything into the machine and make sure that everything works, the commissioning aspect. And as you go along those various different steps, the ePlan project gets enriched with data and you are adding more and more information to the project. And finally, once the project is complete, you're going to install that system at the OEM, at the, uh, sorry, at the end user operator, and you're going to make sure it's running correctly. So now the project of ePlan is complete. This is when you can combine that information and upload that project into the cloud. So we have an environment like ePulse where you could store your project and every participant in that project could easily access the project, visualize the project and to use it for redlining if needed. So the end user operator could use it for maintenance where if there was a fault in the machine while it was running, he could quickly have access to the project information, locate that information and make sure that he can fix the problem at hand. So that's the ecosystem of industrial automation as we see it from an ePlan perspective, where component manufacturers, panel builders, OEM system integrators and operators work together on the same project, on the same platform, sharing the same data. How does this ePlan project get created? This ePlan project gets created using the ePlan solutions. So if you look at the center of this image, you'll see a red bar at the bottom, which is a data storage entity. It's like a database, and that will store all of your control systems data specific to your machine, to your system. And this picture illustrates the various different aspects or tools used for engineering process. So the mechanical engineering starts up where you find tools like 3D modeling tools. You'll have Pro-E, you'll have PT or PTC Creo now, you'll have um, SolidWorks, CATIA, NX, all of those various different 3D tools to create the mechanical aspect. But without controls, that mechanical model won't move, won't create movement. So therefore, all of the controls aspect is everything you see in red where you'll use tools like pre-planning to design some uh, basic engineering topics. You'll use PA to design some control engineering, pro panel to do some control panels. And then finally, you have the software engineering aspect to program all of that system and make sure that it runs correctly. Down below, you'll find ERP PDM systems. So every company has ERP systems or PDM systems, and we need to integrate or interface information to those systems. And up top, you'll have topics that you'll find in the cloud, like our data portal, which contains parts that you can use in your engineering, eBuild to generate schematics, and eView to visualize the schematics and also create different redlining workflows to enhance your workflow. This information is used to generate the ePlan project. So you work on a common data model, whether you're working in your process engineering, whether you're working in your fluid power engineering or electrical engineering, and at the end you have your ePlan project. So let's take a look at those individual solutions a little bit, a little bit more in depth. Let's start with ePlan pre-planning. ePlan pre-planning is the tool that we use up front for capturing information early on in the stage. We can use pre-planning in the world of process engineering. So if you need to design PFDs or PNIDs, process instrumentation diagrams or process flow diagrams, ePlan provides libraries that you can easily use to place all of the symbols on a sheet and connect everything together and already capture your control equipment for process systems. You can also do your plant cabling if necessary to start laying out all of the cables that are needed up front uh, to be routed in trenches, for example, during the building process. You can also structure the data, and that's a very important aspect of ePlan, is the capability to structure your information. Today, a lot of users use Excel sheets to capture all of the instrumentation, to capture all of the actuators, all of their sensors. However, Excel is not a structuring tool, it's just a capturing tool. So if you want to see how many items you've got in a specific section, you have to use filters, sorting items, and you have to kind of organize the data within the Excel sheet. Here, you have a clear view of how your system or plant or process is organized, and you can capture different structures, you can capture different objects, and lay them out in a very organized fashion so you can easily recognize them and find them and work with them. 
Then you can also generate documentation directly out of the system, such as data sheets. If you need to order temperature sensors, pressure sensors, flow sensors from a manufacturer and you need to identify what are the parameters, what are the minimum values, the maximum values, what are the environmental considerations that are needed for those particular devices, all of that can be generated into a data sheet and sent to the manufacturer to provide you with the right components. So these types of documents can be generated automatically. Cable pre-planning, as I mentioned, you can also pre-plan your cables, meaning that upfront you need to know how many sensors around in one area of your plant you'll have and where is your DCS system so you can run all of your cables. So those are type, typically topics that are done early on in your engineering phase and these can also be captured in e-plant pre-planning. Important as well is the quote and estimate type of document needed. You need to be able to understand a system, how much is it going to cost and also how long is it going to take to build. Well, pre-planning can capture not only the controls objects but all of your objects that are needed for quoting and planning and it can summarize all those values so you can see in a sheet here a summary of your complete system identifying the amount of inputs and outputs and signals needed for that system and also the amount of time needed for planning, construction, software, as well as the total cost. So these are just examples of how quickly and early on in the process you can use pre-planning for quoting purposes. E-plan pre-planning can also be used in the building automation environment. If you have systems like air handling units or HVAC systems, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, you can easily plan and design those systems in pre-planning up front. And from there, you can derive all of the control systems for those various different systems. So it's a tie-in between pre-planning from a building perspective and also ePlan Electric P8 for controlling that particular building. So there's an aspect of P&ID as well for all of your water and wastewater system within a building that can all be linked together for building automation. This is what a drawing would could look like from a design perspective where you capture all of your sensors, your measuring devices, you capture your filters, your fans, your ventilators, your air conditioning systems to cool and heat the air which is coming from the outside all the way into the building and identify the control system needed for it. You can also use architectural layouts. So if you have tools like AutoCAD or Autodesk Revit, you could export information from Revit in an Excel file format and import that data into ePlan so that you could identify all the control systems and start planning all of your wiring diagrams and your control panels in ePlan. So we can work together with those different types of systems. You can again structure your data. So here you have a clear view of your building. You can see which level or which floor you're in, if you're in the basement on the first floor and then which room and then which area of that room you're talking about. And for each area, each zone, each specific level, you can capture all of the sensors, all of the actuators needed for your particular building system. So a very easy way to capture your control system. ePlan pre-planning can also be used for OEM and System integrators. You can use a blank canvas to start laying out graphically your mechanical system. So in, the in an example of a conveyor system, you can put your different segments of your conveyor. And as you lay out your system graphically, you will also be capturing a structure of your system. But not only just a location structure, you'll also be identifying all of the actuators and sensors of that particular system. So again, right there up front in the planning phase, you can start understanding how many motors you will need, how many IOs and how many signals you will need, and you can also use it for quoting purposes. So you can import DXF or DWG drawings from AutoCAD and you can use those as a graphical background to start also capturing your control system graphically on top of that particular DXF or DWG drawing. If you're working in the MCC or switch gear business and you need to lay out your switch gear cabinets, you need to lay out your systems and all of your buckets, Instead of doing graphically or using Visio or even a CAD system to kind of graphically capture it, 
why not get graphically capture it as well as logically, meaning that behind each one of those buckets, you'll have the control system needed for that particular bucket, identifying the protection devices, identifying if you need a transformer, all of the various equipment needed per bucket can be captured up front during this elevation drawing layout. So you can create your elevation drawings easily in ePlan, and behind the elevation drawings, again, you capture all of your control system, identifying the various different systems, the various different positions, and in each position, you can capture the bucket and also identify the size of that particular bucket needed to drive your equipment. And finally, ePlan pre-planning can also import and export data. As I mentioned earlier on, you could use Autodesk Revit to kind of capture certain information from a building perspective and then send this information to pre-planning to import the data and continue your controls design to lay out all of your control cabinets, for example. So if you have an Excel sheet, of, if you have an instrumentation list, if you have a motor list, if you have a sensor list, if you have an I.O. list or a signal list, all of those types of Excel sheets can easily be imported in, in pre-planning and again create a structured view of your system and from that structured view you can then drive all of your detail engineering all the way down to your control cabinet very easily. Let's move on to ePlan Fluid. So when we talk about ePlan Fluid, we look at fluid power engineering. So fluid power engineering covers four different topics, pneumatics, hydraulics, cooling, and lubrication. So these are the uses of air or oil to actually create movement, create power transfer if needed on any given system. So we provide libraries that support the, IO represent or the ISO representation of the symbology. And the nomenclature can be completely adjusted to your needs, and we can also design all of the control system from a pneumatic aspect. So whether you're using valve manifolds, whether you're using cylinders, whether you're using vacuum systems, you can use ePlan Fluid to design all of your pneumatic control system needed for uh, that environment. You can also here design your hydraulic system. So if you work in mobile hydraulics or you have press systems where you need a hydraulic system to drive a cylinder, you have here your tank with your hydraulic pump with your motors and all of your control system for that particular hydraulic system. So this can also be captured completely inside of ePlan Fluid. Then you can, from Fluid, click on a button and generate a parts list. So a bill of material is generated from the drawings. So that is the big difference. You don't carry a part a bill of material separately on an Excel sheet and your drawings in a CAD environment. Both of those environments are merged. And now wherever you have your schematics or your pneumatic diagrams, you also have your bill of material. So with the click of a button, you can easily generate your parts list. ePlan Electric P8 allows you to design all of your electrical control systems. So topics like single line diagrams, you can easily capture using P8. You can design your control circuits. You can design your PLCs, your DCSs, your HMI for your machine control. All of the things electrical can be captured and designed using ePlan Electric P8. Here we've got an overview of the machine, and we can capture all of the cable trays. So cable trays will identify the length of a particular segment and by capturing and by creating your single line drawings, for example, you know which devices are connected with what and the system could route the cables through these cable trays and give you cable length calculation. So this is a 2D approach to automatically calculating all of your cable lengths using 2D views. Here we have a motor control. <coughs> in a functional aspect. So you can either represent the motor on the same page as your control equipment. So here you see IOs as well as your actuator on the same page. It's a very easy view to troubleshoot your system. So you know if this motor fails, you know exactly which input, which output are being used to control it. And you can access all the equipment specific to that particular function. Here you can view an IEC layout, so whether you're drawing for the European market or the North American market or the Russian market using GOST norm or the China market using the GB norm, you can uh, design using ePlan with the right symbology and the right terminology needed for those specific markets. Uh, 
Here's an example of loop diagrams. So if you have a PNID that you've designed in pre-planning or you imported data through an instrumentation list, you can map all of this data to your loop diagrams and generate these loop diagrams through uh, typicals or templates that you can easily drag and drop in your system. Here we'll see an interconnect diagram. These interconnect diagrams are used often when you have various different embedded systems or like inside of a car, you have multiple different modules that need to be connected together. And this information can also be used as a starting point to create wire harnesses. So in ePlan Electric P8, you can design all of your control equipment for wire harnessing later on in your environment. And finally, ePlan P8, with a click of a button, you can generate a parts list. So the schematics is your parts list. So the beauty of this is that you don't have to double check whether everything in your bill of material is also on your schematics or vice versa. They all completely integrate it. So if you are missing something on your bill of material, that means it's not in the schematics. And if you're missing something in the schematics, that means it's not in the bill of material. So you'll make sure by creating a correct schematics that you have a correct bill of material as well. ePlan Pro Panel, that's the digital twin of your control cabinet. So why 3D? Well, it's a lot easier to visualize a control cabinet in 3D and make sure everything works. However, the challenge today has always been that 3D tools have always been towards geared towards modeling. So you had to be mechanically inclined or have a mechanical degree to be able to understand how things fit and you would extrude your models and you would create 3D models uh, on the fly or as as needed and that was very tedious or it was very challenging for controls designers or even controls engineers. Why? Because they don't need that amount of detail and they don't need that amount of of complexity in a tool to do their job. So we created ProPanel as a very simplistic approach to 3D. You don't create anything in 3D. You don't extrude models. You don't create a push button. You don't create a, a motor control uh, center or you don't create a, a variable frequency drive. What you do is you download a 3D model from a manufacturer, whether it's from uh, Rockwell, from Festo, from Siemens, ABB, and you can simply place those components in 3D in those enclosures. So it's a very simple 3D tool made for controls designers so they don't have to get lost in the complexity of 3D modeling tools. So this allows the user to quickly understand how his control cabinet's gonna look like. It's very visual, very easy to use, and the user can still identify 2D layouts to easily place his components. So if you're designing anything from an MCC switch gear to control cabinets, marshalling cabinets, DCS cabinets, even fluid power like pneumatic cabinets, you can use ePlan to design that. Here we see some applications using copper bar or bus bars. Those can also be designed in ProPanel. And these are just different views. Here we've got a extraction of the copper information. So if you have a bus bar, a copper bus bar in 3D, you can generate this drawing just by extracting the information from 3D and creating a manufacturing documentation for that particular copper bar. Here you can see information regarding the wiring. So if you look at ePlectric P8 and you look at the connectivity between the components, the wires can then be routed in 3D, the length can be calculated, and you can use that data to automatically drive wire fabrication machines, for example. Here's an example of a pneumatic control cabinet. So if you have pneumatic equipment, valve manifolds, air preparation units, and you need to show the tubes going in and out of the system, this can be done in 3D using ProPanel. So you can do all of your tube length calculations to easily connect that control cabinet afterwards. Here's an example of a hydraulic power unit where you have the tank, the oil tank at the bottom, you've got a motor with the motor pump and that prepares the oil so you can see things like pipes. These can all be designed in 3D using ePlan Pro Panel to make sure that you have the right length and the right bending angles for those particular systems. You can generate all of this documentation with a click of a button. So all of your 2D views now are just a result of the 3D. So you can just simply specify an area and say in that area, I want to see the back plate in 2D from the front and it automatically generates that view. So all of the 
dimensioning, all of the drilling information, all of that is already in the 3D model. So all it is, is just being displayed and extracted for production if needed. So a very useful way of generating documentation. ePlan Harness Pro D is the tool used to design all of your cables and wires inside of a closed compartment. Let's say a car. If you remove the body of the car, you'll see around the uh, the structure of the car, you'll see a whole bunch of cables going around. Like you can see here, this nice little Bentley. If you take it off, then you can see all of the wires and the harness system within that car. So you need a tool to be able to combine the electrical 2D as well as the 3D model of any given object to be able to understand and identify the routes of the various different cables. And this is what Harness does. So here's the view of the harness once it's extracted and laid in 2D, but you need to manufacture this harness like 500, 500 times, 1,000 times. So you use what they call nail boards, and these nail boards need to be created. So to take a 3D model using Harness Pro D, you can import the 3D model. You can overlay on top of the 3D model your wiring diagram imported from Electric P8, and you can route all of the wires around that 3D model, giving you your harness. So that way you don't have to reinvent the wheel, and all of the harness documentation is created from this particular 3D model. So you can import a SOLIDWORKS model, you can import a Creo model, you can import an NX model or CATIA model, and you can overlay all of the wiring information from Electric P8, and then you can create your harness from those particular applications. So if you're looking at mobile, uh, mobile uh, technology, whether it's buses, whether it's trucks, whether it's special vehicles, or you have inside of cars, you have all sorts of different control systems that need to be designed, Harness Pro D is the tool for that. You can also use Harness Pro D to do your field wiring. So if you want to go from a control cabinet on a machine all the way to the sensor or the actuator on the machine, the Harness Pro D can help you lay out all of your cables and do cable length calculations. So it makes it easier for the users afterwards to hook up all of their cables. Here's the result, which is your nail board that gives you the manufacturing information for putting the harness together. Then we have the ePlan data portal. As you saw earlier on, it's part of our cloud application. So the ePlan data portal provides you with over 950,000 components that are available for download. Rockwell alone provides over 30,000 components online in the data portal. So a user that needs a variable frequency drive just goes to the data portal, searches the part number, clicks on the part number, and just downloads it into his schematics. So that way he can easily use that component. Here you've got an example of a VFD or even a circuit breaker or a uh, you know, just a breaker. And associate that breaker, you have the 3D model, you also have the schematics, you have the wiring diagram, and you can drag, drag and drop any of those elements into your design very easily and very quickly. The beauty of the data portal is it's managed by ePlan, but the data is provided by the manufacturers. So the manufacturers vet the information, give us the information, and you can then use that information. So it's a really nice environment to leverage design data and make your design, again, more and more efficient. Then we look into production. When we look at the control cabinets and designing those control cabinets, now you have to build those cabinets. So there are various different tools and systems that can be used to build or help you build those cabinets more quickly and more efficiently. The example here is the Perforex machine from Rital, where you just lock in your back plate, and then you just lock it in here, and you download the information from ProPanel because ProPanel is the digital twin of that control cabinets and knows exactly where the holes are. So you just download the model, lock in the control cabinet, press a button, start, and walk away. And 20 minutes later, or sometimes 15 minutes later, the entire backplate is already drilled and cutouts and all tapped, and everything is just ready to go, ready to be installed. Here's the example of a laser cutter. So this is a similar machine as the Perforex, except it doesn't use drill bits, it uses laser. So you can, again, uh, drill your control cabinet automatically. 
Here we've got the ATEX machine. This is a machine that helps you cut and uh, install your terminal strips automatically. If you have a marshalling panel, you might have hundreds of different terminals on a terminal strip. So snapping those terminals in place and labeling them correctly is probably a tedious task. Here you just simply download the terminal strip design from ePlan and you know exactly how many terminals you are, you know which type of terminals, you know the order, you know the labels. So now the system can just pull those terminals, snap them directly onto the twin rail and automatically provide you with a completed terminal strip ready for install. So it's a very useful machine for generating terminal strips. And finally, we have here the wire terminal, which is a machine that helps you to cut the wires to length. So it can pull wires from over 32 different spools of wire color and wire gauges. It'll pull the right wire, pull it to length, it'll label it, it'll crimp it, and it'll provide it for you to be installed. So you know exactly which wire goes where, from where to where. And we have tools, again, like smart wiring that'll present you, instead of looking at the schematics, it'll present you with a wire list, source, target, wire length, label, and then you can easily wire it. And once you're done, you just check the marks and done. And then you can see exactly how many wires you've already wired and how many more you have to go. So it's a very useful tool for wiring inside of a control cabinet more efficiently. PLC DCS information. A lot of data for PLC programming is available in the schematics and needs to be transferred to your software programming environment. So whether you use Rockwell Studio 5000, whether you use the TIA portal from Siemens, whether you use Mitsubishi IQ Works, or um, you use Beckhoff TwinCat, depending on what software tool you use to program your PLC, the data from the schematics is required for that software. So you can easily interface that information between the various different systems. So we use Automation ML as a standardized interface between the different systems. And you can transfer the information from ePlan to the PLC software back and forth. ePlan Integration Suite allows you to integrate our software solutions with ERP and PDM systems. So whether you're using Siemens Team Center, Windshield, ProCAD, Autodesk Vault, SAP, or others, we can integrate ePlan into those different systems. So that way, a bill of materials from SAP can be transferred to ePlan, and then an updated ePlan bill of material can be transferred, transferred back to SAP for purchasing, for example. Or the design documentation from the platform can be uploaded to Windshield or can be uploaded to Siemens Team Center for storage and management and made available for business applications. So again, we have various different interfaces that we can easily integrate into your existing business solutions. And finally, ePulse, which is our cloud-based engineering ecosystem. So we create an environment in the cloud, which is called ePulse. And in that environment, in that ecosystem, we have various different applications. One application is eView. eView is the online viewer. So you design your system using the ePlan solutions. You click on a button. It uploads that project to the cloud. Now in the cloud, anybody with a browser, with a, with a web browser, can view and visualize the project. And he can also make red linings if necessary. And this information is sent back to engineering so they can update the prints, make the changes, and publish a newer version. So we use Azure Cloud from Microsoft to provide all of our cloud-based services. And again, it provides you with a huge amount of benefits in terms of collaboration, easy access. Uh, you don't have to man manage and maintain all of your IT hardware to store all of the data. So there's a a lot of value in using the cloud as a service. And here, added value again provides new workflows for installation, service, and maintenance that will make your environment a lot more easier to use and access. Here we have a tool called eBuilt. eBuilt is a configurator online. So if you have certain circuits like motor starter circuits or distribution circuits that just need to be configured and generated, you can use eBuilt to quickly put these systems together, click on a button, and auto-generate your designs. So again, a huge benefit in that aspect. And that can also be available either in the cloud or even on-premise.
And finally, the EEC, which is our ePlan engineering configuration, is a high-level tool that allows you to build a modular system. So using a library of blocks or a library of circuits, these circuits are not just static, they're configurable. So using parameters, you can adjust those circuits. You plug these circuits into a configurator, and based on the configuration you select, you can auto-generate your quote, auto-generate your bomb, auto-generate your 3D model, auto-generate your schematics, auto-generate your PLC, and auto-generate all of your manufacturing documentation or manufacturing programs needed. So it's a really, really powerful tool, and you can generate now a lot of tasks that are today tedious in the engineering process. So really, really powerful approach right there. So again, this is an overview of the solutions, and what I'll do now is jump into the software to give you a quick overview of how that interface looks like. So if we switch over to ePlan, first of all, you can use pre-planning, and this is the pre-planning approach where I import a layout of my system. So layouts, I can go to my pages, I can import DXF, DWG files, from external applications and use them as a background. And as you notice here, I can actually select this object, but I can also switch it back and say, this is a background object. So now I can't even click on it, I can't move it. So all of these objects are now going to uh, be uh, a nuisance, so to speak, in my, uh, in my design process. Now I'd like to capture the control system. So instead of trying to type the information in an Excel sheet or in a CAD environment, I simply select, okay, I need a motor. I've got a conveyor belt. I'm going to drop in a motor right here for that particular section. I'm going to identify the motor. This is going to go into my machine, onto my parts preparation segment. So just move it over here and OK. Then the system is going to say, you've got different configurations for that motor, different motor sizes. And this information will also influence my motor control starter circuit. So let's say I'm going to select here a two horsepower motor, and then I've already got it defined. Now I'm going to select a motor for this particular area here. I'm going to drop it in here. This motor is going to go into my part grinding area. And this time I'll need a motor that's a little bit stronger. I'm going to use a four horsepower motor. And now finally for the last segment of my conveyor belt, I'm going to place again a motor in my part processing system. And this is going to be a just a smaller motor just to run the conveyor belt, which is about one horsepower. So you can see a graphical capture of my control system. I also have some pneumatic cylinders here that I need to activate my grinders or to push my grinders into place. So I'm just going to drop in those two cylinders. And you can see here, these two cylinders are now available for my part grinding area. So all I did was just graphically capture some control equipment. And logically here in pre-plan, you can already see that in my parts preparation, I've got a motor and this motor is, oh, I've got my motor two. This one should be here in my parts grinding area. So I'm just going to move it across. So you can see here using drag and drop, you can easily uh, move components from one area to another. Behind each one of these objects, I also have my data. So here's my motor two. I've got a description. I've got my technical description. But I also have information regarding construction, planning, and software. Here, for each one of these objects, I can identify how long is it going to take to build the system, how long is it going to take to plan the system, and also to program it, and how much is it going to cost. This information can be used for quoting purposes. So now, if I wanted to go to a report, Right now, I've got this report that doesn't have any information on it. I'm just going to update it. And now suddenly, it's going to capture all of my control equipment. And you can see here, I've got my pneumatic cylinders. I've got my three motors. It identifies how many IOs, how many signals I need for each one of them. So I need 10 digital outputs, 13 digital inputs. I need five hours of planning, 16 hours of construction, eight hours of software for a total price of $8,500. So this is a way to quickly capture quoting information by simply doing a graphical layout of your system. I need a control cabinet, so I'm just going to right click here. I'm going to insert a macro, which is my enclosure. So I'm just going to go here to pre-planning, machine layout, and this is my enclosure. 
So this enclosure will capture things like my main disconnect and maybe a power supply for my PLC system. So now I need to start my design. To do that, all I have to do, because the objects were already created inside of pre-planning, I can just use drag and drop. So here I've got a pneumatic control system, an air preparation unit. Here are my two, here's my valve manifold, so I can look at my cylinder one, cylinder two. I'm just going to drag and drop those two cylinders here on my page, and here I can just place them. So you can see now how easy it becomes to lay out the control system from a pneumatic perspective. Then I'm going to do the same thing here for my electrical circuit. First, I'm going to take my enclosure, and I'm going to simply drag this enclosure here into my drawing, and it's going to create a new page number 11. And as you can see, I got a page with a main disconnect, and this main disconnect, I've also got a PLC 24 volt supply. Then I'm going to go to my machine layout, select my motors, motor one and motor two. These two, I'm just going to drag them in here. And now behind it again, I've got a control circuit for that. So I'm just going to drop it in here, one and two. And two. Yeah. And as you can see, the sizes of the motors as well was already transferred in part preparation, exactly the information coming from pre-planning. So if I go to my other machine layout page, I'm going to take this third motor and just drag it into here and move it over there. Now for my cylinder, I've got, of course, I've got some extended and retracted sensors. So I'm just going to drag those onto here. And of course, the actuator that starts the cylinder. So using that, I can just simply drag and drop my components right there. Perfect. So now that I've got my control system laid out, I'd like to start assigning some I.O. From an I.O. perspective, if I look at my PLC I.O., I can view all of the information. I can see I've got a couple of inputs here. I've got a couple of outputs, a couple of inputs, a couple of outputs. These were captured as I was laying out my control system. However, I would like to use a configuration that comes from, for example, a PLC programming environment like the TIA portal or um, Studio 5000 Architect or even IAB. So using using Automation ML, I can import a configuration. So I don't have any one of these software running on my machine right now, but I'm going to simply import a file, and this file is going to give me a configuration which will include a rack, a controller. So, and you see, I got four devices. I got one CPU, and these are my these are my components that came from my hardware configuration. So now, if I change the view and I look at a rack-oriented view, I got my configuration project. I got my PLC. I've got my controller. I've got my input, and I've got my output. So, using external tools, you can do your hardware configuration and simply import that. Now I'd like to map this information from ePlan into this hardware configuration. So let's just activate my digital inputs. I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to map these inputs to, to use connection point blockwise. So these are the inputs in my schematics. Now I'm going to select the inputs from the hardware configuration that I imported. And now I can just simply say OK. And if you now look at this information in schematics, now it knows exactly which rack, which slot, and all of the information associated. So you can see also connection point number 8, connection point number 11, connection point number 12. These were auto-transferred from that. And now if I wanted to, I could go to my PLC overview. And in my PLC overview, I could easily look at my PLC. And that's just take the filter off, look at this particular PLC card, and I can just drag this onto my overview page. Now I would view the entire PLC card, and I could just place it. And as you can see, all the information in regards to the IOs is then laid out and captured. So now you know how to manage that. And of course, if you want to click on any one of these devices, you can navigate back to the cross-reference 
and jump into the schematics and know exactly which point you're looking at. So a very easy way in ePlan to manage all of your IOs specific to a design environment and making sure that they are assigned to the right hardware. So now you really don't have to use Excel sheets to manage your hardware layout. You can import all of your hardware information in ePlan and manage it right there and then. So finally, the aspect that's also really interesting is the 3D aspect. If I have here a 3D space, so I haven't changed the software, it's still the same environment, but I'm gonna create a 3D layout. So I'm going to create a new layout space. And in this layout space, I'm going to start inserting that control cabinet. So in here, I've got a 3D mounting layout. Here's my cabinet that I inserted earlier on. So by drag and drop, now I've got a 3D view of that control cabinet. And I can lay out or identify my mounting panel. I can show just the mounting panel. And now I could actually select a front view of that panel and start laying out my control cabinet. So inserting topics like wire duct, inserting DIN rails are just very, very easy. So you select the part number. The part number identifies the physical characteristics of that component. And then I can just simply now just drop it in here and quickly just lay out a system. So you can also snap to existing objects if needed. Yep. And now if I insert a mounting rail, again, you select the part number. This will identify the profile and the type of part that you're using. I'm going to adopt length from here to here and also Click top length. I'm going to place one down here. So you can use coordinates and everything if you need to. To um, if I'm going to copy and paste this, for example, copy and paste. Just insert a new wire duct. Right click, adopt length, this one, and just place it down here. So here I've created a couple of DIN rails and wire ducts, and now I can take all of my components and start laying them out. So here I've got my main disconnect. I'm gonna drop it on here. Then I'm gonna take my contactors or my uh, motor overload switches, and I'm just gonna place them here. I'm gonna take my contactors, drop them in here, so you can see, even if you don't have a 3D representation of a particular component, it will still give you the physical aspects using X, Y, and Z. And that way you can quickly and easily visualize that particular panel. Then I can take my terminal strips and download my terminal strips and place them here on this particular DIN rail. And then I can also now, based on the schematics that I have, I can highlight the entire thing and I can go and say route my system. And all of the wires are then going to be routed within the control cabinet. So each wire now can be measured in terms of length. And if you go and view, you can also view the drilling view. And this will show you exactly, for example, the hole patterns for your DIN rail. And this information could be sent to a Perforex machine for automatic drilling. So that kind of summarizes the topic of our solutions portfolio, giving you a bit of an idea, hopefully a better understanding of what solutions we have and how they all work together. So again, providing you from the overview, capturing your components very easily, all the way to your details engineering, to your 3D layout, and also generating all the reports needed for the application. 
So from my side, thank you very much for participating. Hopefully you got some good information from that.